morning and welcome to another awesome segment of the Power in the Word broadcast with Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is, let's do it God's way. There is power in the Word. Let's watch and listen. We're going to look at a very, very familiar passage of scripture. <clears throat> And we are, some of us are so familiar with this until we just might miss a present blessing. And he says in Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14, he says this, brethren, and when he said brethren, he was talking about women too, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind hmm, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Pilgrim progress and visitors, hear you the word of the Lord. But this, this is the message that God has given us today. And he's saying this, be focused. Everybody say, be focused. be focused. Now, before you sit down, let me tell you what God has been doing. In the first Sunday, if you were here, he told us to be still and know that he's God. And then the second Sunday, we came from Psalm 103. And he told us in so many words, bless the Lord, but he was telling us to be thankful and not forget his benefits. And last week through this sermon, as he dealt with let go of Isaac, he was letting us know to be faithful. You got to have faith. And I need to say this now, that when you have faith, your faith will be tested. And so this morning, on this fourth Sunday, in this first fourth Sunday, this, he's letting us know, be focused. When you are focused on something, it means that you are concentrating. When you are focused on something, it means that whatever you are focused on has your undivided attention. When you are focused, it means that your eyes and your mind and your heart are on this one thing or on this one individual. And if there were ever anyone who was a focused person, it was the Apostle Paul. In this lesson, Apostle Paul. And I want you to know here today that the Apostle Paul was, without a doubt, one of the greatest Christians that had ever lived. He was great because he was focused. Everybody say focused. And one thing I love about the Apostle Paul, when he would, whenever he would write letters, sometimes he would use metaphors and he would use analogies to try to explain about what it really means to be a Christian. And I, I want to say this here today, that today we call this, what kind of Sunday? Casual Sunday. Everybody say Casual. And it's casual Sunday because when uh, the word casual in the dress, it means uh, not, not formal. It means you dress down. But also the term casual can also mean uh, without serious intention. That's what casual can mean. Casual can also mean without serious intention. And I need to say this now. When it comes to Christianity, there is nothing casual about being a Christian. 
There is nothing casual about being a child of God. As a matter of fact, in Philippians, the third chapter, verse 13 uh, through 16, Paul likens the Christian's uh, track as a race. There's one thing about running. I, I used to run, and I, 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 I can run now, but uh, I, don't, I just don't feel like it. You mean? <laughs> and so, I don't know why they're laughing, but, but anyway, I just don't feel like it. I can run now. Don't, that, I, I, anybody want to see me run? The deacon, the deacon said, no, sir. <laughs> so I don't want to make y'all look bad, so I'm not, I'm not going to run. But, 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 we all, but we all know this. I'm trying to get to it. Well, we all know this, that when you're running a race, you have a certain goal in mind. And your goal is, first of all, to finish the race because at the end of the race, there is a finishing line. And whoever can make it to the finishing line first will win a prize. Paul likens this Christian journey as a race. But there's something different from the, the race of a physical race and that of running the Christian race. In a, Christ, in a physical race, only one person can win. There might be 15 or 20 people running the race, but only one can come in number one. But in the Christian race, every person can win if you finish the race. And the hard part about running this race is that sometimes we, some of us run this race not focused. Have our hands in too many things at the same time. And what the Lord is telling you today and telling us as we start this new year of 2016, he's telling us, whatever you do, be focused. Don't lose your focus. And if you're focusing, focus on spiritual things. As you look at this book of Philippians, Paul was in prison. I want you to look at this because this is awesome here. He tells us that I know he was focused, but first of all, Paul was focused on a person. He was not focused on his possessions. He was not focused on his power, whatever, but he was focused on a person. And if you look in Philippians, the first chapter, you need to see this because this is so awesome. He was focused on Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me here? Well, somebody said, how can you tell he was focused? Look, look, let's go to Philippians, the, 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 the first chapter for a minute. I'm glad you got your Bibles open. Amen. If you have a Bible on that phone, turn to, the, turn to your Bible app. And, amen. Turn, turn to that Bible app. Amen. Turn to that Bible app, all right? And if you would notice, if you would notice, if you would notice in, that, in this particular chapter, I want y'all to see this. This is awesome. If you read... Chapter 1 of Philippians, in those first 20 some, some verses, you will see the name Jesus Christ more than one time. In verse 1, you see Christ Jesus. I'm trying to, he's writing his letter. In verse 2, you see the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 6, you see the name Jesus Christ. In verse 8, I'm going somewhere with this, you see the name Jesus Christ. In verse 10, you see Christ. In verse 11, you see Jesus Christ. In verse 13, you see in Christ. In verse 14, you see G Lord. In verse 15, you see Christ. In verse 16, you see Christ. In verse 18, you see Christ. In verse 19, there it is, you see Jesus, Jesus Christ. In verse 21, you see Christ. In verse 23, you see Christ. In verse 26, you see Christ. In verse 27, you see Christ. In verse 29, you see Christ. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was absorbed 
with Jesus Christ. And, and let me tell you just how absorbed that he was. You see, he was focused on Jesus Christ. And although he was in prison, guess what? Prison did not take away his joy because of his focus. Amen. Because if you read Philippians 1.13, he says this, and I thought this was so beautiful. He said, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Notice now, notice he said bonds, and, and another word for bonds is chains. Although he was tied and although he was in chains, but guess what? He didn't, re he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't recognize the chains of Rome. He said, let me tell you right now, although I am physically chained to these Roman soldiers and although I'm physically bound, he said, well, let me tell you, I'm not bound by these chains. I'm bound by Jesus Christ. And I can have my joy now. And he said, not only am I here because of Jesus, he said, even the soldiers know why I'm in chains. You know why they knew why he was in chains? Because every, every so many hours he would be chained to a Roman soldier. You know what he would do when, he was, when, they, were chained to, when they were chained to him? He would talk about Jesus Christ. And so, so what happened after a while, the, the soldiers would go back to, the, to their dormitory and say, you know what, that brother Paul really loves some Jesus. And before you know it, guess what happened? There were several soldiers in, in Caesar's palace that became saved because he was bragging about Jesus Christ. He was focused. Everybody say focus. But then that, that's not all. I want y'all get, y'all got to get this. But he was so focused until he said in Philippians 1 and 21, this is a sermon all to, this is a sermon all to, it, all to itself. And I wonder, can you say this today? Paul said, I'm so focused on Jesus, whew, for me to live is Christ. You don't have to say, man, because if, you, if, if you're not living this, you can't really feel this. What he was saying, he said, not only, not only uh, is my life Christ, he said, for me to live, in other words, my breath and my beating, my heartbeat, everything about me is about Christ. He said, for me to live is Christ, and if I died, it still would be gain. And the reason why he said for me to live is Christ, and if I died, it would be gain because then I'd be with Christ. Can you say that today? That your life is Christ? Look what he says in verse 3. He said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Everybody said rejoice. How could Paul tell them to rejoice he was in prison. He was tied, he was tied to a Roman soul, but he recognized that his joy was not in the prison. His joy was in the Lord. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. Can I say this right now? And I want to say this to our, to our young people here. Let me tell you right now, your parents are doing the best they can to have designer jeans. You don't have to have that X. Do you still have Xboxes now? What do you call it, Xbox and all that? We have a tendency to think that just because I don't have this, I don't have that. But if you are a child of God, if you, you ought to thank God that you have Christian parents that love the Lord. He was so focused on Christ until all the things that he used to treasure and all the things that he thought that made him somebody, that they became nothing to him. Look, look, I want you to look. This is, this is awesome. He said, and I want you to look at uh, Philippians, the third chapter, praise God, verses 5. And he said, let me tell you, he said, if there's anybody that could brag about what they used to have, I can. He said, look at verse 6. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. In other words, ah, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a true born Jew. Yeah, and not only that, I was, I was born in a, in one of the, in, 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 in a tribe of royalty. I was born... Not in, a, not in a small tribe, but I was born in the tribe of Benjamin. And then not only that, not only was I a Hebrew, there it is right there, I was the Hebrews of the Hebrews. And then touching the law, I was a Pharisee. He said concerning zeal, I, was, I persecuted the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. In other words, let me tell you something. Paul was saying, I had a taste 
of notoriety. I've had a taste of prosperity. I've had a taste of being somebody. I had a taste of, uh, my, my name was known all over the world. He said, but since I met Jesus Christ, all that stuff that I thought was important to me is no longer important now because I found someone better. And, and, and he says, now, now my goal now, I got, he, he was focused. He, he said, now, now, he said, my goal now, y'all got to look at this. He said, so my goal now, I want y'all to see this. So my goal now, look at verse 9, is to be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Y'all got to see, this is awesome. Watch this. You know what, what he was saying? He said, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is, the God, is of God by faith. Y'all got to see this. This is going to blow you away. This is worth the sermon right here. What well, Paul was saying this. I tired of being religious. I was a Pharisee. And I majored in these rules and guidelines. And I checked them off. Tithe, yes, I tithe. Pray, yes, I pray. Go to church, yes, I go to church. He said, I was trying to produce my own righteousness. You see, re religion says, I got to go to church. I got to do this. I got to tithe. I got to go to sins. But when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you still do the same thing, but you're doing it for a different reason now. You are doing it because you love the Lord and your relationship with him. Paul even said this. He said, all this other stuff that I used to love. He said, this ain't none, it ain't nothing to me now but dog doo doo. So I, I can, you think remember I got offended when I said that? He said, all this stuff that I used to love and cherish since I met Christ is nothing but garbage to me now. It's nothing but dog manure. It's nothing but extremity. It's dung now. If, if, Paul could, if Paul could sing a solo, you know what he would sing? I want to be more like Jesus every day. But then he said this. He was focused. But not only was he focused on a person, watch this. He was focused on his goal. This is it. This is the, now, now we're getting into this race part, this race part, this race in being focused on his goal, watch this, he was also focused, he faced the facts that he had not arrived yet. And really, before I go into verse uh, 14, I don't want y'all to think that I'm walking around here flapping my wings and jumping around here like I've arrived. I, I, need, to, I need to get that straight at this particular moment. There's a lot of people know I haven't arrived, but that's two for sure. God and Sister Park. That they, and some of y'all probably know too. So I'm not standing up here as if I, but Paul said these words. This is it. He faced the fact of his weaknesses. Look, look, there, there, look at verse 14. He said this. In verse 13, he said, brethren. Y'all see that brethren there? He said, I count not myself to have apprehended. And that word count, he said, that word count is, is logizomai. It means I, as, I, as I estimate myself, as I figure myself out, as I look at my goal, and my goal is spiritual perfection. My goal is to look just like Jesus. He said, he said as I look at myself and my life, I have to put a stamp on my life that says, not yet. But he was so focused, he said these words. Since I have not apprehended, since I have faced the fact of my likeness, he says this, but this one thing I do. Everybody say one thing. Everybody say one thing again. Some of us are caught up in too many things. He said, but there's one thing. See, when you're focused, you just focus on one thing. You're running a race. 
and you can't look back. He said, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting what? First of all, you got to forget all your successes. Yeah, I've done this, and I have an education, I'm this, and I'm that. And some of, some of us can spend so much time with, with, our past, with our past successes until we don't go any further. But ultimately, some of us have not forgiven ourselves for our past sins. Looking in the back, yes, I committed adultery, yes, I was on drugs, yes, I was in a homosexual affair, yes, I was on drugs, yes, I've done this, yes, I had an abortion, yes, I did this, yes, I did this, and I did that, and, and, and all that's behind you, but because you're still guilty, because you still look back, you're still looking back, and you can't go forward, but I'm going to tell you right now, your past is your past. It's over now. You got a goal before you. And you got to run. And Paul says, if forgetting those things which are what? Behind. Everybody say behind. behind. You see, I'm going to tell you, what will happen is if you keep looking in the past, it'll either make you bitter or make you better. Some of, some of you all are bitter right now because you have not let the past go. Let it go. It's past. It's gone. It's under the water. Let it go and go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. You bought stuff over in 2016. You should have left back a long time ago. Let it go. Don't go another farther with that. Let it go and run your race. Past is the past. And there's another thought here, I gotta go. That while you're running, stop looking at to see what somebody else is doing. Stop looking at how somebody else is running. That might be somebody faster than you. That might be somebody slower than you, but you gotta run your race. And you can't base your, the success of your running on what somebody is doing or not doing. Stop comparing yourself to anybody else. Y'all ain't got it yet. You got to look unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. Then he says, forgetting those things which are behind, I'm reaching unto those things which are before. I ain't got time whew, to think about stuff in the past because I got so much that's before me. Y'all ain't got it yet. Have. Do, you know, do you know what's before you? Do you know what's in store for you? Do you know that one day Jesus Christ is coming back? Do you know that one day you're going to be just like Jesus? Do you understand? You got to forget the past and you got to read. Everybody say reach. That word reach. That word reach, I, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw some fellas running. The Olympics, they were running. And when, they, when, when, when they're about to get to the finish line, I saw them fellas doing this. Reaching, stretching, straining, trying to make it to the end. And Paul says, I have not arrived yet, but I'm straining. I'm I'm stretching, I'm, I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm not there yet, but I'm pressing, I'm straining, I'm pressing, I'm pressing. I want to get there. This couple who was farmers one day, they, they had a, a steer that had gotten away. Some of y'all might not know what a steer is. Somebody tell, them what, tell somebody what a steer is. It was a three-year-old steer. And that three-year-old steer was stubborn. That three-year-old steer was very cantankerous. And that three-year-old steer was hard to catch. And if they did catch the steer, they couldn't get the steer back to the house. So the husband decided, I know what I'm going to do. He went in the back of the farm and got this old donkey, a donkey, a bearer. And they took that donkey, 
And they went out to where that still was. And that still stayed still enough for them to, to lasso a rope around the steel's neck. And then they tied this rope to that little bitty burrow of that little bitty donkey. And they let him go. That still was strong. That still was stubborn. That still would do his head like that and just, just drag that donkey all over the all not to begin trees, knocked him all around. He was doing this, trying to get rid of that donkey, trying to get that donkey. The donkey would fall. He'd get up, trying to get, and, and a week, and a week later, one week later, here come the donkey. And behind him was a puzzled, tired steer. And the reason somebody said, well, how, 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 what happened? I'll tell you what happened. That donkey had made up his mind. No matter what happened to me, I'm going to make it home. <laughs> and sometimes he'd get knocked down, but he'd get back up and make another step. He'd get knocked down again make another step. Sometimes he'd get rough, but he made another step. And by that time, the steel, the steel got tired and the duck had made it home. That's what you got to do. You're going to be knocked down sometime, but you got to run on till the race is over. Don't quit. You got to be just like Jesus. He never quit. He went on to Calvary. I say he went on to Calvary and did not come down from the cross. He died for your sins and mine. And guess what? Early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave, and you've got to keep on running. You've got to stay focused. And the Apostle Paul said these words, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I want y'all to know right now, as we sit down, hold on. Stay focused. Make Jesus number one in your life. One day this race will be over. And you'll hear Jesus say, Servant, well done. Thank you for viewing this segment of the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please send an email to ppbc1912 at aol.com. Or you may call our church office at 501-372-4429, where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Also, like and link to us on our Facebook page by searching for Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church or visit us on our web page at www.pilgrimprogress.org. Join us again each Wednesday and Sunday morning at 5 a.m. Have a wonderful and blessed day.